There's two guests this morning that I want to give a special welcome to. Uh, Gary and Barbara are going to come on up and join me here on the stage. Uh, they have been missionaries in Japan for 32 years. Is that right? And we, yeah, come on. And what you probably don't know is that you, as a church family, have been supporting them for the last 10 plus years. Is that right? And uh, I got to have lunch with them this week, and there was about two or three nuggets from our conversation that said, I wish our whole church could have heard this. So I'm gonna take a few highlights from an hour and a half that we spent over at Guys for Lunch just down the street, product placement down there. Uh, and I uh, just wanna share, because I think what you have may encourage and challenge and clarify some things for folks. So again, you guys have been on the field for 32 years now, right? Now the process, you, let me help you turn that on. Here we go. Okay. Boom, here we go. Yeah. All right. All right. Woo. Hello. Um, and Hello. so it was interesting, as you articulated your story, Barbara, you kind of went first, and you kind of had that first mm -hmm. calling to Japan, but then you came back and got involved in your career, and that kind of, we'll just say, got put on the back burner, to say the yeah, least. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, you definitely. guys went again on a second trip, and then, Gary, you came back and just put the application to go yeah. over there long term <gasps> on there. A... I'm curious with you as a wife. What was it like for you when your husband came and put that application there in yeah. front of you? Oh, I, it was like... Okay, Lord, yes, I was willing to go to Japan long term three years ago, but now things have changed. <laughs> um, and um, he just, you know, he put that application on the dining room table and he just said, when you're ready, <laughs> here it is. No pressure. And it was, yeah, I mean, I'm really thankful for that. Yeah. That, you know, he didn't pressure me, but he just let God work mm. in my heart. That would and, be considered pressure in many of our families. I, I want to let you know. <laughs> um, but you yeah. said it wasn't just the application. There was, there, was, there was one story, there was one actual person that mm -hmm. touched your heart because you knew you were kind of running from it, but there was yeah. something that made you move to God's calling. Yeah. Tell us yeah. that story. Yeah, it was a young Japanese woman named Ayako. And um, Ayako had come to Christ as a result of our ministry together there short term mm. uh, the summer before. And, you know, um, while Ayako was there, you know, she was looking at, you know, Christian churches in the U.S., and she just thought, you know, there are so many churches here in America. I just need to go back to my own people mm. and share Jesus with them. And I was like, oh. Wow. God just said, okay, Barbara, you know, <laughs> I called you. Um, what are you going to do with that? Wow. And that was the change point for me. It's interesting. Yeah. You kind of had this little called the conversion of the head, the conversion of the heart yes. that then led you into mm -hmm. action. And over the last 32 years that you've done mm -hmm. some interesting things, you guys have hosted uh, people who'd come and teach English. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd hosted uh, or hosted and kind of had music ministry that yes. went all over. Mm -hmm. You actually got into publishing along the way. But mm -hmm. one of there's an interesting ministry that maybe you guys never planned or thought about that after you had kids. Tell yeah. us about that, because I think there's a lot of people in here who still have kids in the home, and I think what you have is super encouraging for them. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, God surprised me. We went thinking we were going to do music ministry there, yeah. and it, um, with our kids, they were in preschool, and uh, you know, I was watching the moms and their kids and how they interacted with each other, and then uh, they were watching me, too. I didn't realize, but they were watching me, and pretty soon they started asking me questions like, you know, how do you get your kids to obey you? And I'm like, whoa, um, you know, I, I didn't feel like my kids obeyed me all the time, but <laughs> there was something different that they saw. And, and it was just like God began to work in my heart. And as I got to know those moms more, I realized that they were really hungry for some solid mm -hmm. principles yeah. in parenting and that they were alone because their husbands weren't at home. Basically, yeah. the husbands were absent. So what himself. happened with this? I mean, they're kind of coming to you. You're kind of the, 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 yeah. the, the parenting sensei there to use, you know. Mm -hmm. what, what, and what happened? Yeah, so I started a group in my home. Huh. Um, and it just started with a small group of women. Um, but we How many women were in that first group? Six. Six women. Six okay. women. And then what? Yeah, and then um, just I began teaching them biblical principles of parenting. Mm. And there were both Christians and non-Christians in that first group. And especially one woman, Sanai. Sanai was not a believer. And every week, um, Sanai, you know, she'd take home the approaches that we had talked about in the lesson. And she'd come back the next time and say, hey, that really worked. Teach me more what this book, the Bible, huh. has to say about life. 
And it was just an opening into her heart. I love it. Meeting the needs of a mom mm -hmm. and then sharing Christ with her. She followed Jesus, and four years ago this week, uh -huh. I was able to baptize That's her. That's so cool. Yeah. So cool. Okay, now, Gary, uh, your wife is a modest woman. She's not going to talk about it. She's going to talk about the six people and the invited, but the story kind of went on. Will you, Gary, will you kind of fill us in what happened since those right. six women gathered yeah. in your okay. guys' home? So, so in the music ministry, we had done some publishing, and so uh -huh. we had some experience in that. Yeah. And then these mothers were saying, uh, who were learning all these things, said, you know, I'd like to lead my own group. Uh -huh. And so Barbara was starting to pass out her outlines, and I said, you know, this is really a waste because a lot of people really want this stuff. Uh -huh we should publish a book so that they can use that. And so we ended up publishing a book. Over 8,000 copies have been wow. distributed all across Japan. And then we've also re updated that because that was way back almost 20 years ago. Uh -huh. And we've updated that in 2019. And that book has added all these new things that relate to technology and everything that oh, yeah. you know has really affected people's lives. The first book was published before Facebook. <laughs> you know, you know, so we had to deal with all of those things. Yeah, that's crazy. And so it's interesting. Uh, now, Gary, there's something you told me in your story that I think really relates. I think our folks kind of in that 55 to 65-year-old uh, range, there's something they could learn from you in this. Because you talk about this C word that talked about you had this publishing ministry, you had this music ministry, you had this English ministry. Uh, you've also been teaching because you're kind of the elder statesman. But there's this C word that you feel like God is bringing you into this new season. Instead of saying, hey, I'm looking for retirement, I'm looking for it to be done, there's this new thing that God's telling, doing, tell us about that. Yeah, what, what's retirement anyway? You know? <laughs> yeah, the big C word is convergence. We oh, feel God. like all of our experiences up to this point are just all pulling together into a, a convergence area where the best things are yet to come. We're just uh -huh. looking forward to going back to Japan. We're excited about all that God is going to do. Well, there's two things about this convergence. Is there's all these experiences you never would have thought have been brought together, but there's also a new challenge in the middle of that convergence, which I think is actually the greatest opportunity, your greatest challenge, I think, is your greatest opportunity. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, one of the things that we've done, we've, up until just recently, we've only had missionaries coming to Japan from mm -hmm. North America, Canada, and the USA. But now we have partnerships all around the world, and now we're planning on receiving missionaries from all, over 50 countries, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big challenge of how do we work together cross-culturally, not just the cross-culture with the Japanese, but cross-culturally with missionaries. Yeah. Many different... Yeah, well, many different things. And you talked about one of those relationships that actually got your, am, am I getting this right? Was it your book that was translated in for the folks of Malaysia? Mongolia. Mongolia. Okay, sorry. Mongolia. It's close. I'm a white guy from the States. Give me a little gra uh, grace. Um, <laughs> but it's interesting, and I think the cool thing that's happening is in this new season, again, you've got to go digital, so it's going to go bigger than 8,000 yeah. books, mm -hmm. but also you guys are going international. And so I think in this convergence, there's this cool thing, because it goes digital, and because all, you're working with all these other countries, you're going to be able to send these resources out, these biblical principles for parenting, uh, to try and figure that out. Yes, yes. So I have this beautiful vision, and I, and I, and I hope, again, and we've been supporting you guys, and I'm excited that kind of the support we've been giving you is going to help kind of go those ways, to, get, to not only support you guys, but also to go digital, to then take your thing international. But if you could give us maybe one prayer or one vision for kind of this next season that we could pray for you right here, right now, Gary, what, or Barbara, what, what would that be? How can we pray for you? What's the vision that God's put on well, your heart for what's speaking next? on that digital thing, you know, you can't just move it to digital. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that are involved in going to digital. So the big prayer is finding the right partners and how to do it. And it's different for every country. Yeah. You know, for Japan, it would be one way. For, mm -hmm. you know, other countries, it would be another way. So yeah. that's one big prayer. Yeah, and, and just um, getting that digital in Japan, the parenting uh -huh. resources. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I need help from Japanese women. Yeah. The moms yeah. who I've taught. And so, yeah, just prayer for a good, finding the right women mm -hmm. that we can partner with to, to do that. Well, I think it's encouraging to me, and I hope into our congregation, that even when you are the expert or the elder states, men and women in the room, there's still a place where in, in God's plan, he takes you to challenges you haven't done before, and made you rely on other people. So at no point do you get to say, it's all about me, I'm doing it. It's seeing God continue to work. So I'm gonna pray with you right now. And church, will you pray with me and pray that God will answer these prayers and continue to do a miracle so that families can be blessed and lives will be transformed by Jesus? Can I pray for you? Church family, stretch out your hands this way. Lord God, I thank you for Barbara and for Gary, for the call that you've placed on their life and your relentless pursuit of them. 
I thank you for the stories of lives that you've changed in ways they never would have thought possible. And God, I pray that in this next season, what might be their last season of kind of full-time on the ground ministry, whatever that season may be, God, that it would be greater, that we would see a greater impact in the next 32 months than they've seen in the last 32 years of their ministry, God, that you would give them uh, uh, partners to help go digital, partners to go into other countries, and financial partners who will help them kind of release and accelerate the good news of Jesus Christ to change lives one at a time, not only throughout Japan, but through all those other countries with whom you've given them influence. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen.